Hi everyone, welcome to my video on cellulitis. Cellulitis basically means skin infection and the inflammation that follows, but it is one of the more easier nursing exemplars and also something I've seen patients come to the hospital with pretty frequently. I'm going to define cellulitis in more detail for you, talk about signs and symptoms, prevention and treatment, and briefly talk about septicemia, which is a serious complication of cellulitis that can occur with inadequate treatment. Cellulitis is a bacterial infection of the skin layers. When you send samples of the blood or pus if there's an abscess to the lab, it usually grows Staphylococcus aureus or group A Streptococcus. What happens is the organism enters the dermis through a break in the skin. In the hospital, I've seen a lot of IV drug users coming in with cellulitis in one arm because they were using dirty needles. And I've seen diabetics with neuropathy that couldn't feel that they had stepped on a piece of something, maybe glass, and it got infected that way. I've also seen ulcers become infected, and elderly people who have thin skin that lost its elasticity are at higher risk, and so are immunocompromised people. Organisms that are a part of the normal flora of the skin can enter a break and you will see the inflammatory response. And you might be thinking, what about the paper cut I got yesterday? And yes, that can become seriously infected if you don't take care of it, which I'll talk about how in the next slide. Immunocompetent people can get a paper cut and the body can completely get rid of the infection on its own. This is much harder for immunocompromised people. You will see the infection develop into cellulitis, like in the diagram. The signs and symptoms are related to your body's inflammatory response, a nonspecific innate response to invasion. It is the first step towards healing as it is getting rid of the invaders. So you will see the cardinal signs, redness or erythema, pain, heat, and swelling or edema. As you can see in the picture, the left leg is swollen, the ankles are lost, it's a localized infection, and it's got an irregular shape. I've seen cellulitis wrap around limbs and spread in all directions. As a nurse, it will be your job to watch its progression or regression. There are marking pens that you can use to trace the area of infection like in the diagram. It's very easy to do this because of its well-defined borders. The solid line in the diagram shows the primary infected area after a few days of treatment. The dotted line shows how far it had spread in the beginning. When you are assessing the site, watch for spread. This means that treatment is not working. Cellulitis can affect a localized area like this picture, or it can affect an entire limb, and it can spread to the entire body if not treated. The patient will typically have fevers and sometimes chills, elevated white blood cell counts, and maybe tender lymph nodes surrounding the infected site. Your skin is your first natural defense against invaders. Even a small break is an open door to organisms. Anyone can develop cellulitis. So for any wound, big or small, wash with soap and water, apply antibiotics, and cover with a band-aid or gauze. Always monitor for signs of infection, like pus coming from the site or inflammation. Cellulitis can progress very, very quickly. Immunocompromised people need to protect the skin by using lotion to keep it moist and having good nail and skin hygiene. Diabetics with peripheral neuropathy need to have their skin checked regularly for injuries they can't feel. Treatment of cellulitis involves treating the underlying cause. Wound care nurses can develop a plan of care for the wound to keep it clean. If the swelling is bad, the patient can keep the affected limb elevated on a pillow above the level of the heart. Some patients can go home with oral antibiotics, but for severe cases, patients will be admitted for IV antibiotics, hydration, and analgesics to prevent sepsis. Without treatment or treatment with the wrong antibiotics, the infection is going to spread and can eventually enter the bloodstream. As you can imagine, once pathogens are in the bloodstream, they can go anywhere blood can go, and that's literally your entire body. This leads to full body manifestations like fever and chills, hemodynamic changes like tachycardia, you might see increased white blood cell count, or in severe cases, low white blood cell count. 
Bacteria in your blood can lead to septic shock and organ failure, which I will talk about in more detail in a different video. But know that the inflammatory response goes to overdrive, and without aggressive treatment, many people die. For septicemia, monitoring vital signs frequently is very important. Watch for tachycardia, hypotension, tachypnea, and fevers. We need to do antibiotics and fluids and supportive care, but really the best thing is to prevent septicemia from happening. Okay, that's all I have for cellulitis. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more 10-minute videos every Tuesday.